Welcome to A Woman's Work, where we'll be exploring ways to go from surviving to thriving while balancing all the demands of womanhood in today's society. Hey guys, it's your host, Samara James. Welcome. I'm glad to be with you guys today on this beautiful 4th of July weekend. I'm getting ready to go on a little short vacation here, so I'm excited. And I'm excited about today's episode as well. Today, I want to talk about a theme that's been coming up for me. And I've realized as I'm getting the hang of doing these podcasts that I don't really have to think much about what I'm going to talk about because themes just come up in my life associated with the four different areas that I talk about on the show. So this week is relationship rhetoric. And the theme that's been coming up for the past week is friendship. So I had a session with my therapist and we were talking about some things that were happening in my friendships. And it was one of those sessions where I kind of unearthed something that I hadn't realized before. And it was the style that I've had, this pattern I've had with friendships. And it kind of helped me understand how my friendships have been shaped in the past and some things that have happened. And it was really eye opening for me. And then throughout the rest of the week, People kept coming to me out of the blue telling me about things that were happening in their friendships. These are female to female friendships. And so I figured it was only right to talk about the things that came up. The biggest pattern that I've seen with me and with all the other people that I talk to is that when we run into some sort of issue in our friendships at this stage in our life, you know, mid 30s, we're adults with jobs and some of us with children and in marriages. And when we run into difficulties, Um, A lot of times we're afraid to invest the energy into repairing the breaches or whatever has come up in the relationship. And so in my therapy session and with my friends who were telling me about their issues, we were all exploring what makes us invest. One thing about friendships is that when you run into issues they're usually opportunities to build a closer connection. And that's true with all relationships. When you're in relationship with anyone, a partner, your children, your parents, even anyone, and you run into a difficulty and you find yourself on the other side of it, not having destroyed the relationship, you're usually closer than you were before. There's something about making it through a difficulty with someone that creates a stronger bond. But I've noticed with myself and with other people that a lot of times in our friendships, especially when we've got these other significant relationships going, we run into a problem and instead of investing, instead of pushing through, we kind of tend to detach from others. And at first I thought it was just me, but I'm finding that it's typical for a lot of us. And We know from all of our relationships in life that a lot of times difficulties come from misunderstandings. We're interpreting what someone has done in a certain way. And it's either offending us or we could have done something that the other person is interpreting a certain way that offended them. And you can't really mend it without becoming very vulnerable and clearing up all the misunderstandings. In order to do that, you have to open yourself up You have to explain what you're feeling. You have to explain how you're perceiving things. You have to take the risk, you know, that you're wrong and that the other person might think that you're crazy or weird or you've done something wrong. And so it's not an easy thing to do. And for myself, I've had some friendship breakups in my life that were a result of my perception of what someone had done. Um me perceiving it as like a flaw in their character or perceiving it as a direct attack on me. Now that I'm older and just a little bit wiser, I still got a long way to go. I realized that I could have misinterpreted what that person intended. Or even if I didn't, even if, you know, they were attacking me or they knew that they were going to hurt me and they did something anyway, I could choose to forgive and choose to mend anyway. And so now I'm at this place in my life, I've got some situations going on, some things that I could take a guess and say are misunderstandings. And now (laughs) it's kind of like I'm stuck at a crossroads. Now, with this newfound perspective, 
I can choose to continue as I've been, you know, going. And truth be told, though friendships are valuable, we can always generate new friendships. Not saying that they're disposable, but it's not impossible to survive, you know, after we've ended a friendship. Or I can choose a new way of doing things. And that's the challenge, a challenge that I want to present to all of you. Can we do something different as far as how we handle our relationships? For me, the challenge is, can I, in the face of a bump in the road, face that bump head on and push through it with the goal to get to the other side and develop deeper connections with people? And on top of that, how do I decide when that's appropriate? How do I look at a friendship and evaluate whether or not it's appropriate to push forward? Another aspect of friendship I wanted to kind of chat about with you guys today is the reasons why we have certain friendships, especially in adulthood, when we've established our careers and our families and all that stuff. Why do we choose certain friends? And I bring this question up because I've had a lot of changes occur in my life over the last several years. I experienced a divorce, which was extremely painful And one thing that I didn't anticipate was the change in my friendships. So what I experienced was that once I was a divorced person, I didn't get invited to all the same things I used to get invited to by my friends. Um, There was kind of a disconnection that took place. And this is something that I found out is common. A lot of times we choose friends because they're like us and they reinforce what it is that we believe is right about the world. And a lot of us, you know, all of our friends have a lot in common with us. You know, maybe they're all young parents or they're all married or they're all people who love to drink or whatever it is that you have in common. And for me, it was difficult to realize that certain friends were my friends for that reason. Because for me, there was only one kind of friendship. If I say I'm your friend, that means it's unconditional. I'm there for you as long as the friendship, the trust hasn't been breached. So it was hard to discover that there's different categories of friendships. There's different reasons to value friendships. And one is not less important than another. And that's another thing that I have to consider as I look at how I want to handle bumps in the road with people. Do I, in the situations where we're lifestyle friends, I'll call it that, Do I want to push to keep those connections when my life changes in some way and I no longer fit into the image that uh, worked before in my friendships? How do I want to handle that? And in the case of divorce, you know, it's hard for everyone. The people who are your friends may not know how to handle what you're going through. That's no excuse for not being supportive, but it's a real issue. Is that something that you choose to confront and mend or do you just accept that things aren't the same and detach and move away so all these things are part of personal growth part of developing friendships and they're all things that I challenge you all to think about in your life I was in a position where I had a bunch of lifestyle friends that I thought were more than that and when that situation changed it was devastating for me For all of you listening, I challenge you to step back and look at all of your friendships and determine where they fit. Determine what's making them function. Determine what food food they're surviving on. So that if something shifts in your life or if you decide to change something major in your life, you're not shocked when your friendships have to be adjusted as well. So those are all things that I'm thinking about and that I'll probably continue to share with you as I continue to grow and try <clears throat> try out these new ways of interacting and being. Um, these are all just things to consider. When should we push through to the other side? The answer is definitely not never, which has been the case for me, but it's also not all the time. And how do we decide? I'd love to hear back from you guys on what you think about this, about experiences that you've had, about breakups that you've had, or if you've got a situation that you just need someone to talk about it with, let me know. Give me some feedback. 
go to the website at highfrequencywoman.com and submit a form and I'll get back to you because I know how important it is to be able to have people who understand um, to bounce these things off of. That's all I had for you guys today. I'm just speaking from my heart today on a topic that's been on my mind this week. And I look forward to talking with you guys again next week. Enjoy your holiday. I know I will. And thank you so much for listening.